my darlings, I'm going to talk about the court cards now. I'm going to ramble about the court cards. Um, it's taken me ages to get a video out this month because I've been so ill. I've been coughing and spluttering everywhere and really snotty and just basically not video ready. Um, so I've already lost quite a lot of time. There is a lot of tarot related content that I want to discuss this month. I've also kind of changed my ideas about what I want to talk about uh, and what I'd like to teach from now up until the end of the year. I've kind of, I've invented a method. I've been tinkering around with it and playing with it for a while now. And I would like to birth it out into the world and start trying to show other people how to do it and how to use it. Um, but I've made the decision for now to stick to teaching a few other things because I've not really cemented the method and actually I kind of want to put an ebook together to um, explain it in a bit more depth um, and that will be sort of available for free download for those of you who want to kind of follow along and learn how I'm using the cards and more about what the method kind of offers. I'd like you to be able to have some sort of material so I'm kind of... Um, I'm kind of churning it over in my mind and I don't think I'm quite ready to um, to explain it to you guys yet and teach it yet. However, I still do want to put tarot content out and I still do want to get heavily back into talking about the cards because I just so love doing it. So one thing that I thought it would be quite advantageous to teach this month is um, a little more about the court cards. Because I know that they can be tricky for a lot of people and I know that they are normally a bit of a sticking point. Um, a lot of people feel that when a court card comes up in a reading uh, they turn it over and they just think, oh, like that's kind of um, that's kind of harsh, my mellow man. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be doing or saying. I can't quite connect with it, that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some ways that you can get better acquainted with the court cards. I'm going to start by saying that I um, I blogged about the court cards the other day. I offered 60 quirky questions for the court cards that you can uh, go through and use as journaling prompts or kind of brain teasers. Um, and they will help you to bond more closely with the court cards. At least that's the intention. So if you would like to check out that blog post, I'll leave it below. It's called 60 Quirky Court Card Questions. And you might want to actually go through them and give yourself a bit of space and time to think about how you relate to each court card and what you really think each court card means, what, how you relate to the figures and then how you see them. So those questions are kind of intended to help with that. I also wrote another blog post not too long ago about bonding more with the suit of pentacles. I know the suit of pentacles is another problematic thing for a lot of people and I have some theories on why that might be. So I'm going to leave that blog post below as well. If you're one of those people that really gets stuck on the suit of pentacles then I'd recommend checking out that blog post. It's quite lengthy. Um, but what it does is it kind of gives you a breakdown of, of some of the reasons why you might be having difficulties with that particular suit. And on top of that, it also shows you how to mix and match the elements together and how they kind of work as a holistic system. And how they all need to be understood in order for them all to be utilised in a spread and in tarot readings. So um, I'll leave those two blog posts below and hopefully they'll be of some use to those of you who do feel that you need direction in those areas. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about with the court cards is that obviously um, each kind of section of the court um, represent a different element. So one thing that I want to suggest to you is that if it's been a really long time since you revisited the elements and really thought about what they mean to you metaphorically and the associations that you have with them, it might now be a really good time to revisit the elements from your particular personal perspective and decide, you know, update your ideas and decide what you really think each element symbolises and represents for you. You might notice that some of the themes and some of the energies overlap. You might notice that your opinions about a certain element and its energetic frequency have changed over time and you might need to update them and become consciously aware of how your particular journey with the four elements has changed over time. And that will help you to better understand the energies that are inherent within the court cards and that will make you feel more comfortable in terms of working with them and understanding what they symbolise, what kind of character traits they symbolise, what kind of messages they hold, etc. Um, I did this earlier this year with the four elements. I kind of sat down and gave myself some space and some time um, to journal about the elements and to actually close my eyes and work on guided visualisations with each of the elements in order to kind of update, you know, kind of refresh my perspective on them. And it did help me to bond more with the four elements in tarot because it can be very helpful to have that close personal relationship with them. 
And I think, you know, when you're learning tarot, you're picking up these books or you're going onto these blogs and websites and you're reading a lot of um, associated keywords or kind of correspondences that come with each of the four elements. And some of them can be really useful and really helpful and there's no denying that. But if you just try and memorise those keywords that come with your particular book or the blog or website that you favour, what you're doing is you're missing out on the opportunity to go deeper into your own exploration of what the four elements mean to you and what kind of energies they really harness. So I just think it's really important before you move on into an exploration of the court cards, if you are at a sticky stage with them, to decide first of all to dedicate some time uh, and some focus to uh, revisiting the elements from where you are now and looking at how your opinions on them have changed and looking at what they really mean to you. And one really good way of doing this is to think of the four elements as four distinct kinds of personality or as four distinct ways of kind of defining the different traits that can come up in certain people and seem to kind of amalgamate together into you know, distinct flavours of being, if you like. So I would say everybody uh, seems to have or tends to have a primary elemental energy and a secondary elemental energy. For me, I would say my primary element is usually fire, closely followed by air as the secondary element. And what this means is that the energies that I associate with fire and the universal standardised definition of what fire energy is all about... Um, mirrors in my personality and comes out in my personality most often. Um, I use my fire energy to deal with situations, to solve problems, um, to define my identity and to work out what my dynamics are with other people in accordance obviously with which elements they tend to project most strongly. And my secondary element, air, kind of works closely with fire and they interplay, they have a lovely relationship. Um, I feel that my water energy is stronger now than it used to be. Um, I feel that there was, it kind of wasn't harnessed as much before and I used to struggle a lot with being emotionally open. I kind of saw it as a weakness when I was younger, so I've worked a lot on that water energy. Uh, earth energy is the weakest for me. Um, quite often my earth energy is in shadow. That's another thing I'll come to talk about. So earth energy is one that I have to consciously work at awakening and using and bringing into the mix when I need it because it's one of those ones that it's quite difficult for me to get hold of. If you think about the four elements in these terms, it might be really helpful to you as an exercise. It might help you to understand how the four elements actually reflect and mirror parts of the human psyche, uh, the way we think about things, the way we think about each other, the way we deal with conflict, um, you know, all manner of things that we have to approach in our lives. The elements are kind of the underlying driving force. They are a way of defining the personality. There are loads of, of methods that people have come up with for defining personality traits and kind of uh, managing to define somebody roughly by the terrain of their psyche and their personality. For example, the Myers-Briggs test, um, which is based on Jung's theory of typology. And there are many kind of personality tests like this that kind of help you to understand, are you an introvert or an extrovert? You know, are you feeling or thinking? Um, are you judging or perceiving? You know, that kind of thing. And I really feel the four elements can be um, a really simplistic but really nice and understandable way of seeing the different energies that come into play with different people. And if you look at some of the people in your life, you might be able to define as well, when you look at them, what their primary elemental energy seems to be, you know, which element are they using most often, which element are they embodying most often, and the secondary element as well, which element seems to be that helping element that's also very present, and then which elements are potentially weaker and why. Now sometimes you'll find that an elemental energy is in shadow, and so basically it's very prominent in the personality, but it comes across in a, in a difficult way, in a negative way, in a tangled way, in a way that's not actually helpful. So just to give you an example from my own life, I feel that I've always been very, very connected to my masculine energy. However, I don't feel that my masculine energy has always been helpful. I feel that for a long time in my life it was in shadow. So it was in the driver's seat, but it manifested as things like domineering, um, controlling, emotional aloofness, aggression and passive aggression, a desire to win rather than to collaborate, I wanted to compete, you know, that kind of thing. 
So my masculine energy was very, very present, but it didn't necessarily mean it was helpful. It wasn't helpful. It was in shadow. And I needed to really deal with that and own that and make my peace with that. Now that can happen with elemental energies as well. You can find that, you know, your earth energy is very present, but if it's in shadow, it might, it might manifest as things like being overly cautious, playing it way too safe, wanting to go at a glacial pace, you know, maybe ego defenses. Like if I'm, if I'm spontaneous or adventurous, people will think I'm irresponsible. This is one way in which earth energy could manifest itself negatively. With water energy, you might be a very kind of a water centric person, but if your water energy is in shadow, it could display itself as things like overt sentimentality, um, empathy to the point of weakness, to the point where you can't leave the house, like you're so empathic that it's just crushing you, um, getting overly involved in other people's situations, you know, feeling their pain to the extent where you feel like you want to save them and rescue them. That's the water element doing its work, but it's doing its work in shadow it's not helpful to you so I would also recommend looking at things like that and thinking potentially about the court cards as figures who in their own right are embodying a certain set of energies and um, kind of allowing those energies to play out in their lives but those energies could be in light or they could be in shadow you know it's not always positive and it's not always negative there are ways of kind of monitoring your elemental energetic output if you like and seeing that it's doing its work for you and it's actually inspiring and motivating you rather than holding you back or making you feel defensive so i think sometimes it's really useful to look at the court cards as figures who are embodying a certain elemental frequency and using it and kind of uh, bringing it out of themselves because it's kind of who they are personality wise but you've got to think is it in light or is it in shadow is it helpful or is it kind of stagnating is it destructive or is it creative so that's another thing that you might want to think about and you might want to actually uh, segregate your court from the rest of your deck pop the rest of your deck away and actually just give some thought to uh, how you feel about each court card in relation to the element that they're bringing forth. Now this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated because as I think I explained in the court cards episode of my trainee tarot course, although I don't think I went into it in any great depth, but it's certainly something that, that I think I touched on. Um, in the court, all four members of each court are representative of a certain element. They have what we're going to call a shared nature. Okay, so all four of the pages have a shared nature. They have something in common. And what they have in common is that the role of the page itself is an earth centered role. So their shared nature is earth energy. All pages are representative of that gravitational essence, that core energetic frequency of earth and that's how they're all the same all of the knights have a shared nature of air knights in and of themselves embody the energetic essence of air so they have something in common even though they're all representative of the four different elements the underlying energy that foundation energy on which their elemental identity is built is air so that's the exciting thing about them that's how they all link together all of the queens are representative of water. So they've all got their different elements, they've all got their different energies, but their shared nature is that their underlying energy, the essence of what it means to be the queen, is water. And that's what they're channeling. And finally, all the kings have a shared nature of fire. So if you're a king in tarot, it doesn't matter which, um, which suit you're from, you have that baseline energy of fire. So, once you know this about each of the four suits, the exciting thing then is that you can have a look at them individually and you can know a little something about them and how they respond to the element that they represent. So, for example, the Page of Pentacles is really the earthy part of the suit of Earth. So it's really that, um, that kind of magical mixing of Earth energy with Earth energy. It's Earth energy in its purest form. And the page of wands is the earthy part of fire. So because pages represent earth, they have that kind of core nature of earth. Really with the page of wands, you're looking at what happens when the earth energy approaches fire and what happens when those two mix together, what happens when they amalgamate, what happens when they're used in conjunction with each other. 
the page of cups is the earthy part of water because pages are all earth and cups are the suit of water so really you're thinking about what happens when that earthy energy mixes with that watery energy you know what actually happens when those two work in conjunction with each other and the page of swords is basically the earthy part of air what happens when earth and air combine and you go along like this with every part of the court and you start to realize that actually they do all kind of embody the element that they have um, a gravitational pull to. So all pages really are very earthy. For example, the page of cups. So with the page of cups, we're looking at what happens when earth and water meet, what happens when they do something together. So if you think water is often about relationships and sociability, it's about love, it's about self-love, it's about dynamics with other people. It's also about the unconscious, the psyche um, and spirituality sometimes too. So what happens when that mixes with earth and you come across this figure who is really making into reality his water-based side. So he's networking, he's communicating, he's learning about people. He's moving out of his own little circle and he started talking to people that he'd never normally talk to, like a fish in a cup, for example. He's kind of standing on the earth with the water behind him. So it represents that he's basically, he's moved into the earth-centered realm. He's making his watery energy tangible by making these connections, by opening up, by being talkative, by being maybe slightly vulnerable even in a way. So it is, of, it is actually, when you look at it, a perfect mix of water and earth together. If you look at the page of swords, so we're looking at the earthy part of air, that's what we're looking at here. Um, you can see that he's standing on the earth and he's ready to do something. He's poised, ready to gain momentum. Air is all about momentum, but it's about transience as well. It's about change and it's about kind of uh, preparing to rationalise your intention and do something with that intention. So the page of swords, that earthy part of air, is basically where it starts to become tangible, that thought, that um, intention is starting to become tangible he's going to do something with it and you can go on like this um, and if you want I'll do you guys a video where um, I actually just go through each of the cards um, and explain how the two elements actually connect although really I think the most important thing for any tarot student is to do this yourself and make it into a really personal exploration so I would I would advise beginning by thinking about what the earth energy and the fire, water and air energy represent. Because once you've done that, you can recognise for yourself what the pages represent to you. Now to me, earth represents a lot of things. But one thing that it does represent is planting a seed in fertile soil. It's that idea of whatever is in the imagination or whatever it is in, is in the psyche becoming manifest, becoming tangible. And the pages work wonderfully for this as an earth-centred bunch of guys because um, they really are kind of beginning. They're beginning something. They're all kind of starting out with an idea and they're moving into tangibility with it. And that's really exciting for me. Like the page of wands is about to go on an epic journey. The page of swords is about to kind of move into battle or choose his battle in some way. The page of cups is instigating that new relationship and the page of pentacles is almost planning his wonderful future he's looking at the disc and thinking yeah this could go somewhere so for me the pages are very earthy the knights representing air is perfect because for me air is about that quickness that intellect that rational idea and transience and momentum movement and the knights work wonderfully for that because they're all on horseback so there is that sense of movement and what's great about them is that the masculine too um swords and wands are fast moving whereas the cups and the pentacles they're slow moving they're sort of trotting they're like sort of moving along at a slow pace and that's interesting to me because in magic we use the four elements uh, often in accordance with what kind of results we want to achieve so if we want something fast and instantaneous and you know really kind of gravitational pull quick to this now I want a result then we'll go with air and fire whereas if we want that slow moving glacial gradual foundation building kind of magic to occur we want those kinds of results we'll go with uh, water and earth so um, that interests me as well, that the horses are kind of telling a story about the speed at which these elements work. 
kings now fire represents to me passion and doing that masculine doing energy kind of thing um, it also represents the power of the imagination but for me there's really something there's really something earth scorching about fire it's about creating and destroying it's about bringing something into being that is really in line with with authenticity i don't want to go on for too long about what each element means to me but i got a bit carried away there because i'm a fire sign so it's fine and the kings really represent that to me. They do. They represent kind of almost scorching the earth and clearing the debris and then standing strong and actually going forward with something authentic, um, building a kingdom that is in alignment with the spirit. Fire is a very spirit centered element for me um, and very kind of um, in your face, you know, and the kings are the rulers. And so I really I think that they are fiery guys. Um, and lastly, the queens, I think of the queens as being kind of like, um, you know, in chess where only the queen can go everywhere. She has that fluidity of movement and she is almost the strategist. She makes the rules and the king carries them out. So she has that kind of bird's eye view of the worm and she she plays with that knowledge. And that's why the queens are so exciting for me. That's why my channel and my blog and my shop are the four queens. And so for me, they are very water centered. Water fills the vessel that it's been given. Um, it kind of moves into it. it. Wherever there's space, wherever there's a void, water flows effortlessly. And the queens, I think, are the same. There's that effortlessness. There's applying wisdom in accordance with necessity, in accordance with what's needed. And the queens do that. So for me, the queens are very watery characters. So once you understand that, you know, all four um, sets of each court move in alignment with a certain shared nature, once you get the hang of that shared nature and then you go on to kind of looking at your own nature and looking at the nature of other people and seeing how elemental energies kind of manifest in your own personality and which ones are more easily accessible to you and which ones are really difficult to access for you that kind of thing those kinds of explorations will help you to get to grips with the court now there are different ways of, of teaching lessons about the court cards I recently received a comment from somebody who said that the court cards um, have nothing to do with the personality. They're all to do with astrology and that I need to look at astrology if I want to understand the court. Now, I, I would personally argue that understanding of tarot is a huge, huge spectrum. It's a massive spectrum. And in accordance with your specific personality traits, which kind of conveniently goes back to what we're talking about here, you will choose to fall somewhere or another on that spectrum. You know, some people really want to dig into um, the Kabbalah and tarot. It makes sense. You know, they want that kind of system. Some people are all about astrology and tarot. If they were into astrology before, they can easily see and excitedly see how tarot fits into that tarot fits into a lot of different things it fits into the chakra system it's one of those weird tools that actually is so universal that when you look at other kind of spiritual ways of seeing the world or methods of evaluating things you think to yourself blimey tarot actually reflects that tarot actually works with that it works with the myers-briggs test as well typology is inherent within tarot it works with the kirsey temperaments which i'm going to teach you in another video they're all evident in tarot so tarot is a weird animal because no matter what else you're interested in no matter what other spiritual systems you use or ways of understanding personalities or whatever it is that you use you can see that the skeleton, the skeletal system of it, is evident within tarot. That's why tarot fanatics are fanatical. That's why tarot nuts are endlessly excited and in love with tarot. Because it seems to kind of fit everything into it, you know? It's that little Tetris thing where everything that you learn about, you can see inherent within tarot. That's why we call it a holistic system. It's a language of its own and it kind of encapsulates lots and lots of other languages. So there are different ways of understanding the core. And if you wanted to take it down an astrological route, I would say there's no problem with that at all. And if that's how you personally get your kicks, then I think it's really important to go ahead and, and learn about that stuff. For me personally, I'm really interested in psychology um, and to a lesser extent philosophy. I really like looking at tarot through those particular lenses and psychology and the personality and the human psyche and the different ways in which we connect with each other and see the world. Um, for me, 
tarot plays with those ideas because those ideas are what I'm really into. So I teach the court cards in accordance with things like personality traits, um, ego, so the way that you perceive yourself, um, social dynamics with other people, and what kind of strengths, what kind of, of um, abilities, what kind of perspectives do you need in order to handle this situation? That's kind of how I see it. I often feel that when court cards come up, they're representative of which parts of your personality you need to get in touch with and own in order to deal with a situation or solve a problem. And alternatively, I also think court cards can show up to explain to you how certain parts of your personality may have become too domineering or too present uh, to the detriment of other parts of your personality which now need to come into fruition. So I think it's about self-development. I think the court cards are about identity. They're about the way we see ourselves and the way in, ways in which we can improve ourselves and actually come into being, come into wholeness, um, experience integration. So the court cards are really exciting for me for that reason, and that's why I teach them from that perspective. But there are many other ways of, of seeing the court cards and bonding with them. And I would definitely recommend that if my ideas don't work for you, that you go off and you find other people, find other ways of, of perceiving the court. Because tarot, the understanding of tarot is a spectrum, and I teach from my little spot on that spectrum. And it works for some people, it's gravy for some people, and it's not so gravy for other people. And that's absolutely fine. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about um, for now, just basically bonding with the elements from that new place, uh, maybe trying some visualisations or trying some journaling, you know, really get in touch with and reassess what the four elements mean to you. And if you're a witchy type and you have an altar, you might want to put a symbol of the four elements, a metaphorical symbol of the four elements on your altar and really go through a vision quest, really go through a journey. Um, to help you to bond with the four elements and connect with them from this new place in your life because that can be very helpful in understanding the underlying energies of the court um, and then just focusing on, on personality in accordance with elemental energy and let me know below you know which elements you think are your primary and or secondary elements which elements do you embody most of all which elements are you most comfortable with which elements do you see come out of you the most and which elements do you struggle to connect with, you know, and try and connect with more consciously because it's difficult for you? I'd love to know that. Um, I'd love to know how many other people out there have a problem with their earth energy because I, I definitely do for many different reasons and in many different ways. Um, and yeah, the, the, just then going on to looking at how um, elements kind of come out in your personality, how they come out in other people's personalities, elements in light, elements in shadow, look at those energies and see which ones are prominent but not necessarily helpful. You know, there, there is a positive and a negative to every elemental energy. There really is. And it's up to you to decide personally, you know, what does air energy look like when it's being unhelpful? What does air energy look like when it's toxic in a person? Um, and what does earth energy look like when it's really positive? And what does earth energy look like when it's really not doing its job properly and it's really like clogged up and stagnant? That's a really exciting exploration. I find it hugely thrilling. And as I said, it's got to come from that personal place. So get your journals out and start really thinking about the elements in accordance with personality because that can be really exciting. And then also just remembering, you know, that pages hold that core elemental energy of earth and knights hold the elemental energy of air queen's water and king's fire so ask yourself what does that mean focus on the shared nature of each of the four little sets in each court and really just think about uh, what their shared nature provides for you in terms of information and how that can be used in readings. Um, if you didn't check out my trainee tarot course yet, if you're new to the channel or you've not had a chance to look through it, um, I'm also going to link below to the video that I did about the court cards. Hopefully that will also be helpful to you and much love on your tarot journeys. Blessed be.